Hello, I'm Brett Knowles from PM Squared Consulting. This webinar provides a quick overview of best practices in performance measurement and management in banking IT environments. The work we're going to expose to you comes from over 3,000 clients we have done over the last 20 years in helping them establish performance measurement and management solutions. Over the years, every book that Drs. Kaplan and Norton have cited our clients as best case examples, and they've given us four prestigious Hall of Fame awards for the work that we've done. And although this work is centered on many IT departments and financial institutions we've worked on, we're not trying to preach to you an answer, but rather expose you to best practices. Over the years, we have sort of five common objectives that IT departments have come to us with. They're trying to get beyond the IT-centric view of performance and surface the few matter measures that truly matter. They want to establish a common ground so all stakeholders, whether they be customers, job performers, or external stakeholders, understand how IT has been performing. And they also want to be able to provide a framework to allow them for a logical drill down into performance issues and provide a clearer line of sight to team and individual impact and accountabilities. This inevitably allows us to also link back to risk, accountability, the individual team and performance uh, compensation reward systems and job descriptions, as well as aligning the organizations and ensuring that we have links to the right investments and budgeting. So it's a simple solution we've discovered, and that is strategy is at the center of all management decisions. And if we can capture that strategy, it allows us to build more informative and powerful management solutions. But the same strategy and strategic drivers should be used to inform our business plans, be they financial or human capital. And the same strategy connects to how we perform our jobs day to day, the BI and analytics, and finally to how it is we improve our processes. So by putting strategy at the center of all of our management practices, it makes these solutions easier to perform with less complex solutions. Let me show you. Overall, for strategy, we want to capture your strategy in what's called a strategy map. It shows the simple strategic objectives, how important they are to the organization, and how they link to overall success. This tool allows us to begin laying down the foundations of the rest of the management practices. On the management side, we just take that same strategy map and add performance measures so we can begin to see where we're hitting targets, where we're slightly behind targets, and where we're significantly behind target. Between this and the weightings, management can prioritize their times. By the same token, that strategy map becomes a fundamental tool for communicating to all employees and stakeholders those objectives, their definitions, their priorities, and so forth. And this allows us to also begin building a, a logical drill down from the overall strategic objective, if we want to understand what hap is happening with an issue, to a logical drill down to the processes and projects which impact performance. On the planning side, we should be able to take that same strategic objective and understand how it cascades down to the different departments inside of IT and frankly outside of IT so we can ensure that the IT department is providing the right level of support. We can also use this to begin building driver-based plans where we can take drivers and begin to model what happens if those drivers begin to shift to the overall performance. These driver-based plans allow us to do scenario planning inside the IT environment and begin to understand how those scenarios would impact future performance. The same technology and approach should be used in our human capital plans. By far, that's the largest driver of performance in IT organizations, and often it's not planned with the same elegance with which we plan our financial activities. On the perform side, we should be able to step back for a moment and, and take a look at those strategic objectives, uh, and let's list them down the left side, and your core processes across the top. And what we can begin to do is rate and rank how well each process is supporting the strategic objectives. This allows us to begin to see both the performance capabilities, in this example with the blue bars, and the gaps, the gold bars, across each of the strategic objectives or by process. By using the same technique, we can see whether your projects, the process improvement initiatives you have, are lined up to where those strategic gaps are to ensure that the portfolio of investments within IT are closely aligned to where the strategic gaps are. So 
This allows us to begin providing that logical drill down that we saw before, but it also allows us to begin building detailed dashboards that allow operators to understand the correlation between different events and assimilate a broad amount of data simply. Also, we can use this to begin showing individual IT department and player performance so that they have a productivity view of how they've been achieving against various goals. The same approach allows us to begin producing a risk scorecard where we take those same strategic objectives down the left, but now take a look at the identified risks from the risk ledger, how they are impacting each of those objectives and leading indicators of how they're performing. Think of them as sort of tripwires. So in this way, the strategy underpins all these activities. And if you choose to shift your strategy, all these activities will move in lockstep. On the improve side, we can obviously use this to begin to identify where the process improvements are and ensure that our projects and processes are lined up to help close those gaps. This is not difficult to implement. What we've learned is we're just joining together many processes that already exist in most of our clients. And the value comes from joining these disparate systems up, strategy, planning, risk, BI, analytics into one system. In fact, in most clients, we can get a pilot operation in five to 10 days, five simple phases. We should be able to work with the IT leadership team to identify the strategy map and projected uh, priorities. Based on that, we can then identify what are the indicators to success from the existing data. We can do that process and project analysis to see how well your processes are performing and where the gaps are, and then use that to begin not only establishing better management practices, but the communication, and launch that pilot in relatively quick succession. We understand that by launching the pilot and putting it into use, the true process improvement occurs and the development of good performance measurement and management solutions. To learn more about this approach and others, please join us at Balance Scorecard. To learn more about this and other concepts, please join us at pm2consulting.com. Under the Insight tab, you'll find more than 200 webinars covering this and other topics on performance measurement and management.